here to celebrate the Shazy Boys program and win their 10th state championship this past fall. Woo! I would like to ask, are there any varsity girls soccer players here? Are there any here? Well, please stand. We got one, one member here. I want to congratulate our Lady Eagles this year on a fantastic year. Congratulations on winning the national championship. This coming November, it will be our 20th anniversary of our first state championship, if you can imagine that. So the 20 year, I don't know where the time goes, but here we are 20 years later. And here's a fun fact. The boys on today's team were not even born when we won that first title. <laughs> so think about that for a minute. So before I introduce the team, I want to take us back in time. And there's a reason why I'm doing this. Shazy Soccer started back in 1953 under the coaching leadership of John Watkins and Jack Fitz Williams. The program would continue with the following coaches, Doug Burke, Don Hendy, and Bob Grant. The foundation of a successful soccer program had been formed. And in 1965, George Brember came on the scene and changed the landscape of how soccer was played in the North Country. And I can attest to that because I was playing for another school six miles north and they were one of our fierce competitors. So it was heavy. <laughs> Maggie's hands were going like this. And um, I have to remind her in 78, and Coach, I do apologize, but Northeastern didn't win it that year. But that's another story. So, but Coach Brenner uh, coached this team until his retirement in 1988. Coach Brenner's record was 270 wins, 78 losses, 26 ties for a winning percentage of 757. 14 league titles, nine section seven titles. Of course, Coach Brenner became Hall of Fame coach George Brenner. Then in 1890, 1989 to 1995, we had the bridge. Who was going to take over for Coach Brenner? Tom Shregan. So I'm not talking about the Perry's Mills Bridge, I'm talking about the Golden Gate Bridge of Shakespeare Soccer. Tom Shregan, had an incredible record of 115, 28, and 2, and 800 winning percentage. And then, of course, along comes Coach Rob McCullough. From 1996 to present, Coach McCullough's record is 531, 44, and 27 for a 904 winning percentage. Remarkable. There was a wonderful book that was written called Brenner's Boys, The House That George Built. Talking about the life of Coach Brenner, the rise and the success of Shazy Soccer. Coach is now a Hall of Fame coach, as I said. He had a new soccer field dedicated to him called the George Brenner Field. Why do I bring this up? Because history matters. Understanding the foundation, the work ethic, the hours of practice, getting knocked down, but getting back up with more determination than before, overcoming self-doubt matters. None of George's boys or Tom Streetman's boys ever won a state championship. Coach McAuliffe and our guest speaker, Tim Martin, has never won a state championship. But what all these young men at the time had in common was very similar. They set the foundation and the bar for teams that would follow them to be better than they were. In 1996, Coach McAuliffe takes over. They make the Final Four in 97. They lose the state championship in 99 to Faith Heritage 2-1. 2000, they lose in the final four. 2002, they lose in the finals. 2003, they lose in the finals. And there's a lot of doubt. And at the state level, we were known as the Buffalo Bills of soccer. If you remember at that time, the Bills had lost three Super Bowls in a row. And they were like, yeah, that's a team from up north. Yeah, don't worry about them. Well, each year, the boys would come home dust off those cleats and get back at it. There was a burning desire to win that elusive state championship. And then it was the fall of 2004. We finally break through. There are parts of that championship game that still burn in my memory as if it was yesterday. It was 20 years ago. I want to go back to the moment of that time. And the reason I'm doing that, the young gentleman that will be calling up here, I want them to understand what took place back in 2004. Shazy wins their semifinal game. The captain and heart of the soul of that team, Corey Lewis, goes down to the semifinal game with a broken leg. 
We win, we're back in the state championship game, playing a very talented team from Genesee Valley. Could we make this the year we finally break through? So I'm going to go back now and replay the play for you. I want to set the stage. Jay-Z is going from left to right. Genesee Valley is coming from left to right. Jay-Z is wearing their white and green uniforms. Genesee Valley is in their blue uniforms. Sound familiar? Jay-Z is awarded a corner kick on the near post. Justin Seymour sends a corner kick inside the box, and the ball is headed back out to him. The junior doesn't panic. He traps the ball and waits for a couple seconds. Then he launches what I call the perfect pass. It is far enough out to elude the goalie who is coming off the line. But unbeknownst to the goalie, off to his right comes a second-year varsity freshman player, Nolan Ryan. Ryan skies in the air and flicks the ball with his head. And the goalie to his left cannot get to it, and the ball goes into the back of the net. That would eventually be the game winner. Shazy had finally taken the monkey off their back. And why do I bring this up? That team opened the door for future teams to believe and know it could be done. From that moment, the floodgates opened. State championships followed in 05, 07, 09, 10, 12, 13, 17, 18, and 23. The 2004 team will always be known as a team that finally brought Shazy their first title. That is a special bond the 2004 team will always have, and no one can take that away from them. Each team has a special place in Coach McCullough's heart. This year's team will be no different. This 2023 state championship team will have that special bond also. They are the, they'll be known for the team that gave Coach McCullough his 10th state title, and no one can ever take that away from them. So it is my pleasure to introduce to you the 2023 New York State Class D Champions, Coach McCullough and the Shazy Boys.
uh, with his plaque. We, we hung on to it because uh, we knew there was going to be a banquet, so we waited a while. We could have done this a while ago, but we thought that this would be a, a more appropriate for him. So, uh, again, this uh, resolution is to congratulate the Shacey Central Rural School Boys varsity soccer team on capturing their 10th New York State Public High School Athletic Association Class D Championship. Whereas excellence and success in competitive student athletes are achieved through hard work, diligent practice, knowledgeable coaching, unselfish team play, and community support. And whereas it is the practice of this legislative body to recognize and commend those student athletes that unite in a team effort to achieve the pinnacle of success in their chosen sport. And whereas attendant to such concerns and in course of long-standing tradition, the Clinton County Legislature is justly proud to congratulate the Shazy Central Rural School Boys varsity soccer team on capturing their 10th Class D championship on November 11th, 2023 by tying Portland Central School through 80 minutes of regulation and two 15-minute overtimes with a score of 2-2. And, whereas the victory by the Eagles capped an impressive campaign that included a 1902 record and, whereas with this victory, Shazy Central School earned a remarkable and unprecedented 10th state championship crown, the most all-time for any boys soccer team in New York State. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Whereas Coach McAuliffe has amassed an incredible team, uh, helping guide the Eagles to their 10th state championship, the most title owned by a coach in New York State, the most titles owned by a coach in New York State. And whereas the Eagles are very active in the community and serve as a positive role model to their fellow students, and aspiring student athletes, now therefore, be it resolved, the Clinton County Legislature pauses in its deliberations and takes this opportunity to publicly congratulate the Shazy Central Rural School Boys varsity soccer team on capturing their 10th title, and be it further resolved, the Clinton County Legislature wishes, wishes to congratulate all of the players, all of the coaches, all of the staff, all of the parents, and high school officials for achieving this well-deserved title of state championship, Class D, varsity soccer. Tim will address those rumors when he comes up here. 
I had the pleasure to witness Tim as a young player and see him grow, not only as a player, but the man he has become today. He has had much success on the soccer pitch. He has a beautiful family. He's an assistant principal. But Tim does not know this. The one thing I am most proud of Tim Martin is that man never got a red card. <laughs> Tim Martin, come on up. <laughs>
to see the success that you have because in some ways we feel a part of the success that you guys have. Even though we've never made it to that level, we feel like we've put a lot of time in and kind of helped pave the way for students like you and athletes like you to kind of get us to where we're at. Shazy is a special place for me. I'm truly grateful for the opportunities that this school and this soccer program has provided me. Soccer helped me get into the school that I wanted, Oneonta State. Um, I did play soccer with Rob. I, I brought our uh, freshman team picture, uh, both me and Robbie over there, and it's posted up there so everybody can take a look. So I was able to play soccer, gain the education that I needed to become a teacher, eventually getting two masters and becoming an administrator. I'm currently in a building with about 750 students where I had the opportunity to use the values that Shazy has taught me to kind of pay it forward and try to positively impact the students that I now work with. This program has had a fantastic tradition. We've had a run of 10 state championships, all since I left in 93, unfortunately. Um, over 500 wins, arguably the winningest program in this state, but in the country. Although I do feel a little left out about, you know, not getting the state championship, certainly bringing me back to speed is definitely a consolation. So I'm considering myself an honorary state champion, if you don't mind. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, we've had a good run, this program, and certainly it's a testament to the hard work that all of the coaches that you heard have all put in. They're all legendary coaches. I have a connection with each of them. Luckily, my eighth grade year was Coach Brendler's last year coaching. That year we made a deep run into the playoffs. I was able to crack the starting 11 as an eighth grader, scored a couple goals on the way to the, uh, to the sectionals and the regionals through there. And Mr. Bren Mr. Brendler did mention how I was good luck charm when I went in, that things started to happen. And so as an eighth grader, that feeling kind of stuck and, and uh, that was what, you know, kind of motivated me and, and, um, and that was going to be my motivation um, throughout high school. Um, a majority of my career, however, was spent with Mr. Tregan as my coach. Um, great leader, great person, and a great mentor. Um, how he tried to guide me and keep me from getting in trouble on the field, I'll always be grateful. Um, Poor guy, I didn't through a lot. Um, but Mr. Tregan was, was definitely somebody that uh, meant a lot to me. And then there was Coach Rob. Rob and I went to high school together. He was three years ahead of me. Um, we played soccer and baseball together. And Robbie was a great athlete. We both went to play on Division I college soccer at Oneonta, and he was a big part of me getting into that school. And he was an inspiration to me, along with his mom, his dad, and his brothers. I went to school with Shay, and, and uh, Shay was my goalie, so, you know, there was that connection with the family, and, you know, our families were close with each other, so, um, you know, that meant a lot. But what Rob has done for this program is beyond words. He is the winningest coach, he's got the winningest program. Basically, he's put Shay-Z on the map when it comes to high school soccer. Everybody knows about this program. And combined with his school leadership and his coaching, this community is better off because Rob has been at the helm. The knowledge that he imparts on his assistant coaches, who have, many of them, gone on to be successful coaches in their own right. In high school, Robbie's name was Schemer. That was his nickname. Not a lot of people know that. Thanks. Old people like me. <laughs> so basically, it was, it was a name that was given. He went to a, a, a soccer camp early on in his high school career, and his coaches saw, you know, his his ability to kind of be one step ahead with his passing and his execution, um, and that's why they gave him the, the nickname Schemer, which in the dictionary means, you know, to kind of plan and, and to kind of know, be one step ahead and. You know, certainly he continues to have that foresight as he leads this program ahead into the, you know, into the future. 
So congrats to Rob, you know, congrats to the, the, the also the assistant coaches, Austin, Josh, and Craig. You guys have once again risen to the high expectations of this program. So congratulations to you guys as well. This group of guys, coaches, along with Mr. Brenner, Mr. Tregan, they've been much more than coaches to you guys, to the players that they work with. They've been mentors, they've been leaders, educators, role models, and friends. The amount of lives that they have all impacted over the course of their tenures cannot be measured. We are all grateful for the time and the efforts that you guys have all put in. So coaches, we really appreciate everything that you do and everything that you've done for this team. And to our audience, parents and guardians, brothers, sisters, grandmothers and grandfathers, aunts and uncles, but especially the parents. I want to congratulate you guys and applaud all of you. As a father of three, I now know the dedication and the commitment that it takes for the parents during this season, with the games, the practices, and everything else that goes into the season. It's a lot. And I hope you guys realize the efforts that your parents and the sacrifices that they make to make sure that you guys are as successful as you need to be. And that's really important. So I hope you don't take that for granted because that is something that, you know, is, is something that you guys need to, to recognize for sure. I was gonna kind of break for a couple minutes and let all the kids go around to their parents and, and thank them, but I want you guys to do that after, after we're done here because um, the sacrifice that they have to put in to make you guys happy. They have to give up their time, things that they want to do, um, you know, just to make sure that you guys are well taken care of. And that's a big deal. And again, that's something that shouldn't be overlooked. Parents, you guys all deserve credit for the successes of this season, just as much as these guys sitting right here at this front table. Um, as I said, I want you guys to take some time and make sure that, that you guys recognize your parents after this because to me that's important. Um, my mom was a big part of, of you know, my success. Um, and you guys probably all know my mom, Mrs. Martin, she was the uh, lady in the office for many years. Um, and, uh, and she's done a great job. I also want to recognize, almost like my second mom, Mrs. McAuliffe. I have to take a second and recognize one of yours, one of this program's most devoted fans that we have. Mrs. McAuliffe is at almost every game and she is always there for not only her son, but for you guys. I can always count on going down to Middletown it's where it's kind of where I live now, and always seeing Miss McAuliffe. She was always there, and to me, that's very important. She is one of this program's most devoted fans, and we are really grateful for you, Miss McAuliffe. our children succeed, right? And with what this team and these guys have accomplished, your parents must be so proud of you guys. So continue to try and make them proud each and every day with how you live your lives. To the players, once again, congratulations for making it to the biggest stage that they have for schoolboy soccer. You guys should all be super proud of what you guys have accomplished. Continue to show the efforts that you've put in this year on the soccer field and extend it to life in general. You guys are champions on the field. I want you to be champions in life. All that you do, whether it's on the field, as you continue to play, whether it's at school, work, your relationships, or your family, continue to be the best person that you can be. The values that this program and that this community, this soccer culture here at Shea Z has taught me over the years, have helped shape who I am as a person. 
they're the same values that your coaches try to extend to you. Things like work ethic, your commitment and your dedication, tenacity on the field, the heart that you have, attention to details, your work in the classroom, the fact that we learn from our mistakes, the respect, the respect that we show those around you, whether it's your parents, your teachers, your coaches, those who have come before you. Shazy is deep with family history and ancestors. We've been around for a while. We need to show the respect for everybody. The teamwork and the relationships. It's a long season. You guys have had some highs and lows. You've worked hard to develop a chemistry with your teammates and work to establish to maintain the relationships that you've created. I want you to continue to work to keep those friendships going. Coming to these alumni games helps with this. Not only is it an opportunity for me to dump a hat trick on the other team, the even years, that's right, the team that Rob is on, and the team that you guys will be on, so you guys can come and bring it as well. But Rob is a big part um, of that, and you know, seeing friends and, and having those alumni games gives us a chance to you know, reconnect with the friends that we haven't seen and the, the relationships that we've made. The consistency. It's not what we do once in a while that shapes our lives. It's what we do consistently. And again, whether it's the classes in class, the practices out on the soccer field, being with your family, you should always try to be consistent with what you do. And then challenging yourself. Sometimes things happen in our lifetimes that force us to go through a tough time. And they make us question our purpose. Owen's passing was difficult on many levels. This team rallied together to work through the adversity that was presented. I was able to see, see the state semifinals and the final games this year. I felt there was a presence on that field that helped motivate you guys to a different level. I never met Owen, but I know the impact that he had on this year's team. He and I shared the same jersey number, 24. And I do know that when he was on the field, he also tried to embody the same values that I speak to you all about tonight. And lastly and most importantly is kindness. Your acts of kindness to those around you have a profound effect on people whether you know it or not. This world can be a better place by simple acts of kindness. And it's important to spread that kindness. You never know how much a smile or a nice thing to say can affect the next person. You don't know what's going on with people in people's lives. So your act of kindness or your smile may have a lifelong effect and may really impact the way people are feeling in somebody's life. It's important to try to include these values as part of who you are moving forward. Always know with what you guys have accomplished, people are always looking up to you guys. You have to set a good example. You have to be a good role model. Make your parents, your teachers, your coaches proud, but most of all, make yourselves proud. If you can try to live your lives in this way, you will definitely impact the lives around you in a positive way. And you will always be proud and confident of who you are. Thank you again for this opportunity, Rob. Guys, congratulations once again. Let's give it up for our state champions.
He also played for Oneana and the Empire State Games have been mentioned before. Coach never played as a high school player on the George Brendler Field, but was instrumental in making sure the George Brendler Field became a reality for future generations, and you guys are the recipient of that. He comes back home and takes over a very successful storied soccer program, and as a young man, and his success is well documented and well known. Coach will tell you that it's not him at all. There are many people who deserve credit, and in some sense, that may be true, but it's Coach McAuliffe who is the true glue to all this. So it is my pleasure to introduce our future <coughs> Hall of Fame coach, the GOAT of high school soccer coach in the state history, with 10 state championships and a winning percentage of 904, Coach Ron Cullen. Kristen, Ava, and Jack, 
as uh, they as they know, I you know say goodbye to them in the end of August and then say you know hello again in kind of mid November. Uh, so I appreciate all those days that I'm gone. Tim kind of took the the, the the wind out of my sails about my mom who uh, has been going to Shazy soccer games since uh, the mid '80s, and she was so sad when my youngest brother was close to graduation, and then I took over as coach, then, so she's been going since, literally since the mid-80s, and there's not many games she's missed since uh, the 1980s, so I do want to thank my mom, my wife, and Ava and Jack for all that they've done for me, so. So, it was many years ago, I was saying in uh, that room, for many many of you adults here remember when that was the only PEX room was over there and we had our 2004 state championship banquet and we're thinking God I may never do this again I better enjoy this banquet I never thought I'd be standing up here talking about uh, number 10 I will say though that when I got to we got to 9 I was like I can't end at 9 right and so I'm glad we got to 10 but I think what is kind of interesting is that I have been here obviously through all those years and how times have changed. And I'll give you an example. My second year in 1997 went to the Final Four. And I can't tell you how many people, that for people who were around in 1997, when we went to the Final Four, the community was exploding. I mean, it was just like the biggest thing ever. It was huge. I mean, it was just, the, the community like just was turned inside out. And I remember that whole, when we lost in the semifinals, in, a snow, in an absolute snowstorm, and the rest of that year, all I got was congratulations, oh my God, what a season, and congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. And then fast forward to last year, we lose in the state championship game in a very, very close game, and what do I get now? I'm so sorry. <laughs> and people, people come to me like there's been a death in my family because we lost in the state championship game, and I remember, I remember like the years where it used to be like so awesome if I got to this, we got the state championship game. And now people, I can see it too. You know that Stewart's talk? <laughs> no, I'm talking, we all know what I'm talking about. I'm in Stewart's like, oh no. And like, I'm so sorry about your loss. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I think like that's the that's the pressure that these kids are under most years. Um, and, and, I, and, uh, and I know many of you have, you know, you all got, you know, your hotel reservations for Middletown, like, in April of last year, didn't it, right? So there goes to show you the pressure that we're under. The, 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 unfortunately, this year, our state championship rings aren't going to be in until a little bit later, but the ring guy from Balfour that I go through, you know what he does every year? He emails me around the state championship time to say, hey, let me know if, if you guys win it. Oh my God! So he's already planning on ordering our state championship ring before we play the games. Um, and and so the, the last one I had, and I'll introduce the boys here. I had I always tell the boys that really, does, if you're a neutral, I mean, you don't have you're going to a game and you're not you don't have a family member on one team or another. I always say to the boys, if you look up into the stands and you don't recognize that person, if you don't know if it's you know, Kobe's dad, or you know, Dylan's mom, or you don't recognize those people, they're probably not rooting for us. <laughs> Most people don't root for us to win. They like to see other people win. So we kind of know we're not that group. Um, except this year, I had an older gentleman say to me, he goes, he goes, the season was over, I saw him a little bit around Thanksgiving, and he and I didn't know him that well, and he said, I just want you to know, this is the one year I think me and a lot of other people were rooting for you. So we were glad you guys did well. So it was nice one time that we actually had people rooting for us. So that was nice. So um, what I'd like to do is introduce uh, the players and uh, just talk a little bit about each one, if we could. Um, now this year we do have a couple players who could not make it uh, today, so I'll just talk about them uh, briefly. Um, Jack Rovers, uh, freshman. Uh, listen, what a to come up. I think when I called Jack and said, you're going to be on the varsity team, he was thinking, oh great, I get a uniform, I warm up, I can be on the bench, this is going to be awesome, I can stand, sit next to Chase Dickerson and laugh about things, <laughs> this is going to be awesome. And the next thing you know, I'm saying, but no, but now you're playing, and what does he do? Goes and scores a goal in the state 
and I find him, I know Christ, and may it went off your nose, I know. <laughs> but we're not going to talk about that, really. But uh, uh, just congratulations to Jack. A round of applause for Jack Rose. <laughs> the other one who could not be here today is Oliver Stoddard. Uh, so I'm going to ask you guys this if you know this question about Oliver. So every morning when I see Oliver, I say, good morning, Oliver. What does he say to me? Coach. Howdy. Howdy. So can anyone imitate the howdy? I can. So I see, I see Oliver every morning. I say, hey, hey Oliver, how are you? Howdy. <laughs> but what a great boy. Uh, so if you see him, am I right, Mr. Norcross? Every morning, howdy. So Oliver couldn't make it today, but if he was here, he would say, howdy. Um, but Oliver, what a great boy. What a great guy to have. Team. He's one of those kids that when he he's a junior, he's a junior now, so he didn't have to pick up the cones and pennies and all that kind of stuff. But very often uh, Oliver was the one uh, kid who always did that. Uh, what a kind kid, what a great soul, and what a great teammate. So a round of applause for Oliver. Stuff. First is uh, freshman Ryan DeMars. Can stay there, Ryan? I'll play this thing. Uh, is when I when Ryan got asked to play varsity, I told him very early on that I believed that he was going to be a starter at left back and play pretty much every minute. Um, I remember seeing in the first the tournament games, he was really nervous. He was really nervous about, about all of it. But I guess what I was so um, proud of Ryan this year is that he, he was nervous on those first games. But really, if you actually, if you would watch all these games, there was never a game that any of us walked away from and said, Ryan, didn't, well, except for Chris, probably. No, no, none of us said Ryan played poorly. I'm sure Chris had numerous lists of things that he thought Ryan played poorly. With, but, but the rest of us thought, and it really, it was amazing for a young kid like Ryan to be put in a very tough position playing left back in, in, in big games. And boy, did that kid play well as a freshman. And again, if you think about those games, there's not many we walked away from and said, Ryan didn't play well. And that's a, that's a lot. He, he is a He didn't look like a freshman, but I swear he is a freshman. And, um, but what a, and, and what was so great about Ryan is I would tell him, here's some things to work on. Here's something every time you could see it in games and practices, he was getting better and better and listening. What a, what a great kid to have on the team. What a, a, a coachable kid. So, um, Ryan DeMars. He wasn't concerned about getting the goal and all that kind of stuff. 
Landon is going to be a great leader and a great player for us for many years, not just because of his ability, but because of that type of attitude and what he gives to us. So, Landon Dupin. Thinking about this in the, in the coming days is 
to, you know, to be perfectly honest, it's like, how is Rob going to talk about all important, right? And so, um, I'm going to do my best. <laughs> so, um, you know, let, I think we have to speak honestly about it. I think, you know, one of the things I thought about coming into today is that, do I just talk about how, you know, only the ups of the season. But, but our season wasn't just all ups. There was, there was obviously a very difficult time. And I think, you know, Owen's passing changed everyone in this room forever, right? Um, some maybe smaller, some a lot. But his passing has changed everyone else. There is no question on that. If you're a parent, I guarantee you, you, you hug your, your children a little more after that day. Uh, you held on to him a little longer than you probably did on the day before he passed. Um, and he changes. He, he changed the lives of all these boys forever. Um, whether as a classmate or as a teammate, um, our lives have been impacted by his passing. Um, but it did change us in the sense that I think so many of us now look back at that day and the day before it, to many of you parents out there, we're worried about a mortgage payment. Uh, we may have fought with our spouse the night before. We may have yelled at our kid for not cleaning the room. We may have been stressed about bills. Um, but then all of a sudden, those things weren't as important as they were the day before. So I think he did change us. And I, did, and I, and I do think that he, the change of these boys' lives, that you know, too many of us out there who are older, like myself, we have experienced tragedy, but when you're 16, um, you probably haven't. And so to them, to these boys, this was obviously a very difficult time where many of us have unfortunately lost family members where we could figure out how to handle that. But to these boys, they needed people, and they had you, and they had our little community to take care of. And so I think it did impact us all. But I also think, um, and it brought us all together on those days. I, I'm not sure if I have felt Shazy more connected and more one than they were on those days after he passed. Um, but also, I think of the impact that he had on us as a person. Um, you know, his smile, all the parts of Owen that we miss. And we are, we do miss him, right? And, and there's no reason to, to try to not talk about how we miss him. Um, listen, the one thing that people can say about me is that I'm not the most spiritual man in the world. I'm not the most religious man in the world. But I will say this, and this will sound very spiritual and very, maybe, religious, but um, we will see him again. We will, boys. We will see him again. When you see him again, when that day does come, he will still be funny. Uh, he, I want you to notice, he will still have a really bad left foot. Uh, he, he will still not be able to score goals if you gave him a chance from five yards out. He won't. Uh, when you do see him again, Elijah is going to make fun of you. I'm sorry. Um, I, you know, I wouldn't laugh too hard, Hudson. He's going to be making fun oh, of We all know Ben. He's going to make fun of him. So we will see him again. And it may not be anytime soon. Um, and I think I've learned too that um, with you know extreme grief is connected to the, the amount of how much you love someone. And I think it is obvious that our grief was extreme, so that must have meant that our love for him was extreme also. Um, and I think what he has done is that he has made all of us think about our lives a little differently. And I think he's made a bond for these boys forever. You know, people always ask me what's different from one team to the next. Well, this team is tied together forever. So years and years from now, when they're Tim Martin's age and my age, um, they will always be teammates. And I think this bond, as much as I, you know, talked many years over the years about how close teams were in 04 and 05 and 2012 and all that stuff, this is a different situation. And these boys will love each other um, forever because of what they've gone through 
and how much they have learned to love each other and, what, and, and how much they do care for each other. So I do want a round of applause for on board, but before we get that, I do want to ask uh, his good friend Maddox Tindall to come up to get his back. So a round of applause for on board. <laughs> Um, and so I remember thinking to myself, poor kid, um, you know, 
obviously the rest of the season's done, but in my head I'm like, oh well, he's got a whole you know, 10 months to recover. And as you know, his mom Krista knows and, and Hudson knows, there was a lot of ups and downs over these past months. And I'd see Hudson and things weren't going well. The recovery wasn't great. And I remember at one time, kind of like in May, June time thinking, I'm not sure if he's gonna play. And it wasn't because of his health, yes, partly that, but most kids nowadays, for the, the, the pain he had to go through to try to, to recover from it, all the work he had to do, all the appointments that he had to go to, I remember thinking in the summertime, maybe it's not gonna happen for him. And he's just not, and, not, and again, more so that he was gonna throw his hands up and say, forget it. But he just would not give on it. I, I, I talk all the time about the strengths of kids nowadays and the weaknesses. There's a lot of great things about this generation of kids, and there's some things, some things they're not good at. One of them is they're not very resilient kids at times. But that kid is. Hudson could have given up and said, heck with it, but he didn't. He just kept. And why? Did, did Hudson think when the season started, I'm going to be starting, playing every minute? No. He just wanted to be a part of it. Because he knew that health-wise he wasn't great, but he fought and fought and fought to get to the point where he could be a part of our team and be out there on the field where many other kids would have said, no chance, forget it. And so we're proud of you, Hudson, for what you've done. Hudson's it. Kobe was on the bus 
Do you know why? <laughs> really loud laughing all the time. All about leave the other stuff. Leave the other stuff. I knew Kobe was always on the bus. But uh, what a great kid. Uh, and he, for these last two years, what a great job he has done for us in so many positions. Um, and so we're excited to have Kobe back for next year. Kobe Hernandez. The next is junior Elijah, Elijah Valentin. Uh, Elijah also coming off an injury. Uh, I wondered what he was going to be like. I can't believe that he actually uh, hurt his legs because he has the biggest calves in the history of mankind. Uh, so I just know that's possible. So when you're walking out here behind him, just take a look. They're huge. Uh, it's like someone put a grapefruit in the back of his leg. Um, and so, how is it possible? I don't know. But, um, Elijah, another guy who came back from injury to be a part of this, but um, I remember in the Lisbon game, we put Elijah in late. Uh, and he, I think it was Mr. Tatro or someone, I said, uh, you know, I think we'll put Elijah, okay, we're going to put him, I said, up front, and I'll say, watch this. And I said, I said, watch this, because I knew he is going to go, and he, now, I love Elijah, but he's not going to be a marathon anytime soon. <laughs> so I knew that he has like a shelf life. So I put him on the field, knowing that it's going to start to peep around as the time goes on. But what you get, you get a firecracker for about four or five minutes. And I put Elijah out there, and I'd say, and I remember saying, watch this. And against Lisbon, just chasing, chasing, chasing. And we're thinking, oh, oh, shelf life, shelf life. <laughs> but I think Elijah is that kind of, like I said to you before, like emblematic of the team. Elijah didn't care that he didn't play in the first 74 minutes of the game. But when I put him in for the last six, he was going to give everything. And he was so proud. I always liked Elijah because. He was always so proud of on the sideline of what our team was doing. And when he, when I tapped him on the shoulder to go out there, he didn't care if he went for two minutes or three minutes or ten minutes. But he was going to give everything um, to the guy sitting next to him. So I'm proud of you, Elijah. Elijah Bounds. And then I'm like, yes, no, back. He goes, um, do you wear blue lemon? 
Uh, yeah, I do. I said, okay. I'm not really sure why that, those questions were asked, but Novak would just make practice uh, fun. He made, he, he was a, one of those guys who's just a great teammate, makes, uh, people love the kid, and uh, it makes him, it made us all enjoy our time together. Novak's not just a great player, but a great teammate. Novak Jones.
Chase was nothing but a positive thing to this team. Uh, I, I, we were so thankful to have Chase. Everyone in this on this table loves that that kid. Loves that he was with us. I remember times um, I watched a part of our state semifinal game, and I think it was Max's goal. Uh, no, it was near our bench. I can't remember which one it was. All I know is we're seeing Chase like almost on the field. So happy for it. But um, I think more people need to be like Chase. Life is pretty good, and we we're happy to have uh, Chase Dickerson on our team uh, for this year. Chase Dickerson. Landon, we should be proud of the, the, the kid that you are and the, 
and the man you're going to be. And uh, uh, I'm just glad that you're with us for these last few years. Landon Franklin. So now our captains. Um, first, Amir Foster. Um, I will say this, Amir, and I think everyone in this room and all the guys sitting next to you will say this. We wouldn't be sitting here, we wouldn't be having that behind me if it wasn't for Zamir Foster. Yep. Zamir is the first Shazy goalie in the history of our, our program, which is a long time, that will not be known for making a save, but for actually scoring a goal. <laughs> so his junior year, when Zamir scored that PK, remember that one? That That is one of those, like, etched in Shazy lore, Shazy soccer history, that Zamir, and I think most people will probably think if they see that someday or hear about it, will think, oh, he must have been a forward. He was our goalie. Uh, and what a, what a great moment he had, but what a great goalie he was. This is a, this is a kid who was not like a goalie from age like six up. Um, he, he took on this, this position at, at later on in, in his career. Um, but my best story about Zamir, besides all the great saves and great moments, and thank God we had him for all those for these last few years, is I went to a coach's meeting. And one of the coaches said to me, and said, hey, Rob, uh, that foster kid's good. I said, yeah, he's, he's a great goalie. He goes, yeah, my players are afraid of him. I go, I kind of understand that. They said, so my players, like, when crosses were coming in, my players didn't want to go and try to head it because they were afraid Samir was going to, like, run him over. And I, I said, uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I'd be afraid too. Uh, and then, this is great though. So then the coach goes, yeah. So then kids are yelling at each other at halftime because, you know, the, the the wingers are saying, you know, you guys are afraid to go in, and the kids are like, I'm going to get run over by you, you kill me. And then, but the coach, this is the greatest part, the coach goes, but then the second half comes, I'm like, yeah, so what's the, what, what do you mean? He goes, then what did you do? I'm like, I don't know. He goes, you put him out as forward. He goes, now the rest of the team is afraid of him. Because he's running around, knocking kids over, falling down himself, plowing over people. He sort of went from like this small group of kids that were afraid of him. Now like all 11 were afraid of him. And he goes, it was kind of good because now they could all blame each other for being afraid of Samir. And they said, well, I get it. Uh, these guys all practice with him every day. They were afraid of him too. But, uh, but Samir, what a career you had for us in these last two years, and um, boy, what a goalie you were, and as I said, being a goalie in Shazy is the toughest position because they think you're not supposed to let any goals in ever, and if you do, then it's your fault. Um, but Zamir, you're a great goalie, a great friend, and a great captain for us, Zamir Foster. Next senior captain, Evan Dwyer. Uh, so Evan, a, another position where no one, you know, people don't give a lot of uh, credit to. Tim Martin can uh, vouch for this. Is playing defensive, playing sweeper, playing in the back is always a tough role for a, a, a kid at Shay Z. Um, I think Evan is the most underrated player in this room. And I'll, I'll give you a story. Evan probably doesn't want to remember this one, but I went to, he was a JV player, and I went to Beekman Town to watch a JV team play. And I proceeded to watch Evan, I think, <coughs> kick two goals in for the other team. That was a bad sign. That was not a good look for what his future might be for me. Uh, maybe not two. It uh, might have been two. It was three. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and one was really bad, honestly, really bad. And so I looked, I said, maybe Evans, I don't know how this is going to work out. Yeah, kicking people in for the you know, their team is not a positive thing uh, in this sport. 
And, but when he came to us, and this is what, there are many kids uh, that play this sport, and many more in the room today, where God gave them amazing talent. Uh, Nolan Ryan's one of the best players to ever play here. Tim Martin's one of the best players to ever play Shazy. God gave them a lot of ability. Evan was given a lot of ability too, but he had to work at it. And Evan, I will tell you this much, there is no one at this, in this, on this table who has worked harder to make himself the player he became. Um, he, when I asked him to improve on things, he did. I was hard on Evan sometimes. Some of you may have heard my, my, my hardness across the field at him. But Evan is the most underrated player in this room and for what he did, remember, he played sweeper on a team that gave up only three goals in a year. And then, then a team that, went, that you know, got to co-state champions the year after. Um, there's a, they obviously did his job well. And boy, did that kid make himself over these years better and better and better to the point where he was one of our best players we had on the field. So Evan, you should be proud of what you accomplished and what you've done for our team. Really should be proud of what you made of yourself over these last few years. Evan Dwyer. Dylan, uh, obviously I've been coaching Dylan since he, you know, since 
who was a little kid. And I remember when he, um, we were at the crate, and I'll never forget this moment. We're at the crate, it's like a U8 game, everybody's going side, you know, sideways on the, the crate. And we're playing, we go up by a couple goals, and at a young age, Dylan could really strike a ball. I mean, kick a ball hard. And so he goes in, absolutely crushes a ball, scores another one. And remember the goalies at U8? Remember the hands at the side? The ball's going past them. So Dylan is just ripping balls at this poor girl in net. And I'm like, oh my God. So I start hearing the mother of the goalie starting to yell towards me, like, he's going to hurt somebody. And I was like, yeah, you're right. He is going to hurt somebody. What are going to do? So he just kept on taking shots. So I take Dylan off. I'm like, Dylan, buddy, yeah, you are you're doing super. <laughs> Can you do me a favor? The next time you close the net, and then you kick it in. But just you know, she's you're gonna like you know destroy this young child. So just can you be a little softer? And he's like, yeah, yeah, sure. I said, you know, my head like ain't nothing. Just be, you know, be a little easy. Like, okay, sure, sure. So Dylan goes out there, and ten seconds later he gets the ball and drills the girl on the side of the head. She turned like this. Like, oh, um, but what I got to realize at that moment and shortly after was Dylan was the, one of the most intense players I've ever had. But what I mean by that is that. I always say to people all the time that one advantage, and George knows what I'm talking about, and Tim does too, one advantage we always, we always have in games, and no matter who we play, we always have this little bit of advantage. We want to win more than they do. It's always the case. I don't care who we play, what school it is, it means more to us than it does them. And that does give us a little bit. Dylan Mackey, for these last few, these last years with me, has never walked on a field where someone else wanted to win more than him. If you watched him over these years, this season meant so much to him. Whether we were at NAC on a Tuesday, Saranac Lake on a Thursday, it didn't matter. Dylan wanted this to be here. I think if you asked Dylan in, in August, what did he want? He'd say, I want to be standing in this room in, on a March night celebrating a state championship. And when, and I have a feeling too, uh, Tim and Daniel, I might have said the same thing about his brother. But um, Dylan remembered that there was no one who wanted to win and no one who, who cared more about this than he did from a young age to today. Dylan is to score as many goals as he did this year, 30 some odd goals. What an amazing performance Dylan Matthew put on uh, in this season. Not to mention that last goal in the state championship game that people don't talk about. What an amazing goal that was. And uh, I talk about Zamir and about him. I think we can all say this in this room. If, if Dylan Mackey's not on that field, uh, we don't have that banner behind us either. But what a career you had with us, Dylan. We're all so proud of what you've done. Dylan Mackey. Sad 
going through really hard times, and doing it alone. But we didn't do those hard times alone. We did them together. And I think that's what makes um, this team special, that we did, we did go through hard times um, together. Um, but this is what I want to say to you boys. What you did was really improbable. I think your parents back there, your, your family, and one day when you get older, you will look back at what you just accomplished. And I know it sounds like we're all just saying all these great things about you, but it's true. But one day, you will look back at what you just did with all the things that went on and go, I can't believe we did that. I can't believe we accomplished that. It really is kind of amazing about what you did. And I think... That's what makes your parents so proud, is that what you did, considering everything. And, um, and lastly, I say this, I love my wife, I love my son, I love my daughter, I love my mom. Um, but I always tell you boys I love them. It's different. My, my love for them is different than all of you. Um, but I hope you always know that I, I do love you boys. I'm proud to tell people that I'm your coach. I'm proud to tell them that um, I'm with you and we did this this together. Um, and one day you'll be sitting around with some of these guys um, and you'll be in your 30s, 40s, 50s, probably having a beer together, and you'll talk about how special this really was and how amazing this moment was together. And uh, you will be really proud of yourselves because I know we, we are all really proud of you. And uh, I just want to congratulate you boys on the season. Thank you. Coach, wonderful job. The uh, as he was just finishing up, he was talking about the parents and all that stuff.
would like to, a uh, nice part of the evening where we can recognize the people who excelled on the field this year. And um, they were recognized by their peers and other coaches for other successes they had. Uh, so first award we have is Northern Soccer League Division II Second Team All-Star Evan Boyer.
The boys have signed posters, and they want to make sure that everyone grabs one on the way out. So thank you for tonight, and again, congratulations. Thank you.